One South Africa movement leader, Musa Maimane, has slammed his former colleagues in the Democratic Alliance. He says DA leader John Stenhazen is conceding defeat if the party is open to a coalition with the ANC. Stenhazen told the Sunday Times that uh, the coalition was a possibility should the party win the 2024 elections. However, the DA would only consider this if President Cyril Ramaphosa was still leading the party and not his deputy, uh, David Mamuza. Well, Musa Maimane is my guest this hour and uh, he joins us now. Mr. Maimane, thank you very much for your time. Um, are, are you not being disingenuous here? And I ask you this question because um, you are saying that John Stenhazen and the larger DA should simply concede defeat already and not be a party in opposition, uh, needless to say, the main opposition because of its stance of wanting to uh, go to a coalition if indeed uh, President Ramaphosa uh, was still ANC leader. Perhaps let's just start with why you hold this view that the DA should concede defeat before I point out uh, what my problem may possibly be about that. Sure. And uh, good afternoon, Tony, and good afternoon, fellow South Africans. First and foremost, I think it's born out of a bad premise. The first premise is that there's a good ANC and a bad ANC. Hmm. The good ANC is presumably led by President Ramaphosa, and a bad ANC is led by David Mabuza, just as a hypothetical example. Hmm. Firstly, I think it's a myth to suggest that. Secondly, I think it's not born out of reality in the sense that I think there's only one ANC. The issue in this country is not just corruption. It also has to do with policy. And so if the ANC wants to advance policies such as, you know, whatever, state capture that emanates from cater deployment, such as whether you might have a view on expropriation without compensation, such as the fact that it wants to establish a land bank or, or, a, national, or a state bank, whatever those policies are, good or bad, we must accept them to mean they come from one party. So I, I simply battle with this idea that, well, we can pick this faction and ignore that one. Lastly, yeah. I think that even in all reality, we must face up to the fact that there's been corruption that has happened all the way throughout. So how do you say that corruption under the PPE scandal, which has occurred under Mr. Uh, President Ramaphosa, is much or less or better than the corruption that occurred under President Zuma. I find right. the analysis poor and lacking ambition. So if you can't beat them, join them. All right. So th that's the view. So uh, primarily here, your problem is Stenhazen saying he would join forces with the ANC, provided that Ramaphosa is at the helm. But others listening to you would say, but did you not go into coalitions when the Democratic Alliance won a sizable amount, but not big enough uh, to, for example, run cities like that of uh, Tabecha, previously Nelson Mandela Bay. Were you, were you, should you not have considered defeat uh, as uh, an opposition party uh, in the first place? My issue is not coalitions with other parties. Hmm. My issue is a coalition with a faction, because you happen to believe that this faction is appealing to you and not that faction. That's choosing who is the best amongst all of them. That's not your place. Mm. Coalitions are the future of this country. If we're going to build coalitions, I still maintain that part of the problem in this country, the elephant sitting in the room, is that we have a party called the NC that has brought us policies that are not delivering prosperity for South Africans. We have an education system in this country that has failed. Why would I coalesce with people who want to create an education system that fails. Mm. So let's go back to Kabeha. Let's go back to Johannesburg. When we got in there, yes, it was tough to work with certain parties within the coalition, but it was still better for South Africa, for South Africans to know that government can change from one party to the next. Mm. They needed to know that the ANC can be beaten because even the ANC themselves would tell you that they fought for democratic outcomes rather than, in fact, a one-party state, so that you and I must sit here today and be consumed with what happens at the NEC, rather than as to what happens in the actual elections and how we can bring change. So ambition says, let us work hard to bring a change of government, rather than simply sitting down 
and, and not wanting to build a new alternative. I want to build right. an alternative. That's what one South Africa is doing. Isn't the other issue, though, or perhaps the main issue as to why you took it upon yourself to respond to Stenhazen this time around, isn't it that it is mentioned in that article that the DA regressed under your leadership for the first time since the time that Helen Zille uh, became leader of the Democratic Alliance? You, the, the political fortunes of the Democratic Alliance, started losing ground under your leadership. Isn't that the issue? Well, that's what I took um, the great exception to. Because fundamentally, I think, fine, I concede. And I was not the perfect leader of the DA. I made some mistakes. We lost 1.5%. Cyril Ramaphosa lost more than that. But in that context, I want to say what here's the problem. The article pontificates as though solely my money was to blame. That all of the new leadership not when part of the federal executive, when part of the National Management Committee. They are now suddenly innocent people who it feels like landed from Mars after I departed and suddenly were in charge of the party. They were in the war room. They were in the leadership. So to suddenly say, no, 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 no. We don't know what was going on. It was just him. It was almost as if I ran the election alone. Hmm. But having said all of that even, I think it's important to note this one truth. And I still maintain, the project of building a South Africa for all is hard. You know, you can, it's easy to build a party where you can say, we'll just focus on one race and just only be interested in just being a homogenous group of people. That's easy. But if you are really trying to build a South Africa for all, I am proud of the fact that when I led the DA, I wanted to take it to all communities in South Africa. And the road to a non-racial future is not a perfect straight line. Of course, you are going to lose in certain places. But it was a worthwhile sacrifice to put on the table because when we were leading, our caucus was being diversified. We were governing in other places, in other metros, because we built a diverse coalition. And then to regress all of that today in a world where, in fact, now the project seems to be committed to focusing only on some people and focusing in some geographic areas, to me, is a regression. And the elections are coming up now. So let history decide for itself how these elections will pan out. But I can assure you, from where I sit, I think it was absolutely correct to want to build a non-racial movement for all South Africans. If you fail at that project, you fail South Africa. Yeah. Let me ask you the question, Mr. Maimane. What do you think changed for Helen Zille about you? Well, I think it's a question best posed to her. To be fair, I think that this whole notion of creating the impression that, you know, I, I was reading some articles that started to develop. And when the roles reversed, where I was leader of the party, she was premier, in a world where I really believed, that's why I always thought when I served in the DI, I really believed we could be a vehicle for all. That when the change of attitude came back to say, no, after the 2019 elections, it's clear that a particular race of South Africans weren't voting at that point, that suddenly, it was a fallacy to suggest that black people and white people could work together. That change introduced this whole vision that the DA is now coming up with, which is to say we are colorblind, which is to ignore the historical injustices of our country, which is to not seek to diversify and elect a leadership that looks only a particular way. Clearly, these are the issues at the core of why I even, as a South African, as I sit here today, it was improbable because I had a vision for all and it feels the current leadership has a vision for some, and mm -hmm. therefore it's unsustainable. That's why I needed to step and now build this one South Africa where I genuinely believe we can work together with all citizens. So, in all honesty then, Mr. Maimane, the attitude of Helen Zille and others, because John Stenhazen um, comes into the picture uh, belatedly when he, uh, I think at some point, uh, decided that uh, he was going to betray you, if memory serves correctly, uh, upon or ahead of your resignation from the party. The issue here was the whole issue around the diversity clause that the party had started to want to embrace. Am I correct? It's, that is a symbolic issue. 
at its core, it's this idea. Our politics and our political parties emerged from pre-94. And the deer is part of that. So whilst I accept the fact that it perhaps was historically just a white party, when I took the leadership, I was very deliberate to say it needed to be a party of all South Africans. Diversity and diversifying the parliamentary benches is but one issue. But actually also going out to say, as you would have read in the article, we've got to move from just simply being Cape Town based to Gauteng is the second issue that I wanted to go because I wanted to advance a party that will work across the country. Furthermore, to make sure that our investments in resources in government were then put to communities that, because of the history of our country, happen to be black communities who happen to be poor. Mm. We need to build clinics in communities that are poor. We need to build infrastructure in communities that are poor. Once that project is not rewarded always at, a, at the electoral scoreboard, then people move back and said, no, the formula we used to get here was a formula where you consolidate only a few people, build with just those people. And I think to me, it's a misnomer. I don't take glory at the fact that, as to what's going on right now. I think it robs the South African body politic to simply reduce our politics of black parties versus white parties. We need something in the middle of all South Africans. So it's not just a question of diversity. It's about how do you build an inclusive economy and willing to pay the price for those things. Be willing to actually say, we must advance redress. So it was one of the issues as to how you do that. Yes, I'm not an advocate of triple B, double E, but you can't deny the fact that South Africa still needs redress. So if someone sits back and says, now we are colorblind, how is that issue then going to come on board? There's no denying the fact that when you are in government, you have to invest in communities that are poor because you've got to upgrade that infrastructure. These are projects that to be lazy is to sit back and say, well, don't worry about that. But to be genuinely wanting to build a South Africa for all, you have to confront those issues. You have to be honest about the past. And you have to say, what does the future look like? And yeah. build on from there. All so right. that's still to this day the argument that rages on. And nobody into, from the ANC, DA, EFF, the whole lot, have not figured out ways to answer the question. So if the Democratic Alliance is not willing to be honest about the racial divides in this country, is John Stenhazen capable of not just leading the Democratic Alliance, but growing that party, in your view? I think I'm not the right person to answer that question. I think it's the DA internal electorate that need to do it. Because they will, in the end, vote. And they have voted. They have elected him. So they clearly must have a belief that the project they are engaged with is a project he can lead. As things stand at the moment, we have a problem in this country. The body politic in general has distanced itself from the citizens. You and I are sitting here watching Zondo Commission, and yet no one has been held accountable. So we have to reform our politics. That's why I'm engaged in this question of direct elections, because I want for citizens on the ground to be able to directly elect their people. We have to make sure that we reform how we do democracy. Because this is the problem, that, though, Mr. Maimani. Okay, can I tell you what my problem is with you? And not wanting mm. to, to offer a comment on whether or not John Stenhazen is a capable leader, is that he is able to express that about you. Yet you seem very uh, reticent no, about I, expressing an opinion fact, fact, about him. And his the fact of the matter is, when I left the DA, I believed I worked with Mr. Stienhazen. I did not believe he was right to lead the DA because that's a different job in and of itself. It's not just leading the DA, it's about leading South Africa. What was and the problem with his qualities? No, it's not about qualities. I'm not here to do an audit on it. I'm simply here to tell you that fundamentally, I thought that the vision that he held which is that of being colorblind, which is that of saying we can't have redress, which is what the DAs in some ways uh, put out, to me are not the qualities that are going to serve South Africa best going forward. That is a project he's engaged in, and that is not a project I endorse. That's why we had a falling out, because I didn't feel I could contribute to that particular project. I needed to lead one 
that is inclusive of all South Africans. Let me let you go, Mr. Maimane, but uh, before I do that, do you care to tell us what this is about? You've issued a statement, or it's almost a, it's an advisory, it's a media advisory where uh, Musa Maimane is going to reveal information exposing the Gupta's plan to grab power at ESCOM. What is that about? Well, certainly we'll, we'll speak more about that tomorrow. As you know, the business rescue process that's been engaged with at the moment is seeking to settle what is going on at Optimum Mine. And I certainly am looking forward to saying we can't allow other players like the Guptas to be able to come in by the back door to continue to pillage that asset of the country at the expense of the people of South Africa. All right, uh, Musa Maimani, that's uh, the leader of uh, One South Africa Movement. Uh, thank you very much for your time.